In this video, we're going to go over uh, a few different workflows to add some more detail to this uh, Vic Viper spaceship. If you've ever played the game Gradius back in the day, you'll probably recognize this. Uh, it's a golden age game. I really like it. Gradius 3 on Super Nintendo, one of my favorite games of all time. Um, all right, so I kind of already went through and introduced the uh, selection or shape to normal workflow when I was kind of talking about our sliders and buttons in the last video. But let's go over it again in a very step-by-step -step way. You can already see I have some detail right here that I'm using. Um, first of all, I want to show us how we can uh, optimize our scenes by zipping up uh, our folders here. So you can see I, already, I have these uh, three little layers down here, layer folders, groups, whatever you want to call them, uh, that have this panel detail that we made. Um, so I'm kind of done with this panel for now. So when you get done with something, notice how we have all these layers that get created with it, right? Uh, after a while, the more details you make, that's going to be a lot of layers. So uh, Indu has a cool little tool where you can kind of zip up a group and minimize the number of layers you have. So when you get done with uh, a layer group or folder right there, you can zoom in and you see this little zip, toggle zip mode. That'll uh, zip up the currently selected folder here. And now instead of like 12 layers, we only have two. So um, that's really handy. And if you want to work on it again, you can just unzip it or just start messing with it and it'll, it'll unzip itself. And now we have all of our layers back in there. So that's something to definitely keep in mind as we go through and we work. So I'm going to zip up these uh, layers right here. That way my performance doesn't start chugging. And uh, we, we, you know, don't let the performance of the computer get in the way of our workflow. All right. So uh, let's go over the, the shape. The normal workflow or the selection of normal workflow. Uh, this can both work for just selecting a marquee shape like that, um, but I always recommend uh, or just using a shape. Um, but I always recommend uh, being really careful about how you start this uh, workflow because you want to create an empty layer inside uh this layer group let's zoom in because this is very important you want to create a layer that's in between your root normal right here and your color correcting layer right here this seems to be where endu really likes you to create new layers for shapes and detail the only bummer is uh this little color corrector right here uh it'll shift your shape to like a little tint of blue so i'm going to make sure i have white selected here and then with my selection, I'm just going to do like a simple, uh, uh, some simple grooves here. So I'm going to go in and deselect some stuff. I'm not giving too much thought about the detail that I want to add. And then we'll do something like this. Uh, so you can see I have a lot of different widths here. So we'll see how that handles. So you can either go straight to your selection and convert over. Uh, but I don't really recommend that. I would like to fill my uh, layers up with color and then control D to deselect and then uh, convert uh, the shape. See how it's a squiggly paintbrush mark instead of a selection marquee. So we just click that and we convert and we can see that the size on these looks pretty good. Um, but I don't know, it gets weird down here. Before I go any further, I'm gonna go down here and rename this uh, vents or something. I don't know. Just so I know that this is a, uh, a layer group that I'm working on, I'm happy with. I can always come back to it and tweak. So let's take the size down again to something like two. Let's change my slant to down. And uh, no. There we go. A little bit more shallow. In fact, if you change your bevel to outer, and let's change our shape the chisel is that not going to do anything oh that okay that is doing something and then we can bring our size down again all right i think it liked it better when it was uh smoothed out but i'm gonna i'm gonna manhandle this 
to my wheel. So let's give it a size of four. Nah, okay. Let's. What does one look like? Okay, we'll do a size of one. We'll do something real subtle. So you can see down here, uh, my slant, I think I changed it. Okay, so that's coming up. I want this to go in again. And curve, we can just play around and see what some of these do. That doesn't do much. Peaks. Some of these just may not work with uh, certain bevels or sizes you know see yeah there we've increased the size and it kind of just does butcher these smaller ones but you know it's creating some shapes for us so there is a little bit of uh playing around the more you play around with these settings the more you're going to intimately get to know them all right so uh basically that's how you do just a straight shape to normal workflow um, it's really easy, uh, but there's just a f one or two problems with it, and I don't think it's the best workflow, um, it, but it's the most straightforward. But yet, if you need to come in here and tweak your shapes, you know, how would you do that? Do you go in and, I mean, look at all these different layers that it turned that simple shape to. Is it just in the root down here? You know, no, no. You're just kind of deleting it piecemeal, and that's not good. So uh, there is a way we can go back in and edit this, but you can see how uh, this workflow is a little limited. So why don't we uh, look at the uh, sculpt workflow, that, and then we can see how we can tweak the shape of this normal. So if you need to go in and tweak a, uh, a standard group, you noticed how there's just so many layers here that with the same shape, but just different kind of effects going on it. It'd be real hard to go in and change the shape after you've converted. But never fear, we can go into toggle scoped mode and it'll convert the layer into a sculpting mode for a second where, I, I don't think I did that right. Let's try that again. Oh, well, I guess I did. I think it's just weird. So what this is doing in, is with uh, my eraser selected, I can go in, or with a marquee selected, I can go in and delete some detail. And I can even draw, look at this, I'm drawing with, uh, you know, just a brush with a white color. And I'm drawing this crappy little detail in. <laughs> and then we can go out of uh, sculpt mode and it'll take the detail and it'll make it. And then this, that's not too good, is it? But you can see the power of this tool. It allows you to go in and tweak layers. And then, of course, that curve is making this look real bad. So let's just go with a regular linear and then uh, an outer bevel with a smooth now. And now that little detail that I kind of drew out with my brush, you can see it makes a little bit more sense. So you can use the sculpt mode to go back and tweak already made layers or just go in and kind of draw more organically with uh, brushes on some normal stuff. Not my favorite way of doing things, but if you get good with, with the uh, technique, uh, it can be pretty powerful. So sculpt mode is really good for uh, mainly just editing um, already created modes. In fact, I'm going to go in back into sculpt mode and uh, take my marquee and delete this detail because it's real bad. I just wanted to show how the brush can work in real time in sculpt mode. All right, we'll go out of sculpt mode by clicking the sculpt brush again. And I at least want to take these back to chisel with a setting of two now. All right. All right, all right, come on. There we go. My opacity got turned down somehow. All right, we'll refresh 3D, and there are my vents right there. All right, so we've uh, kind of talked about our sculpt, our regular selection, the normal workflow. Why don't we zip up these vents? I'm kind of done looking at them. So we'll zip them up. And now let's talk about my uh, favorite uh, kind of way to do normals. It might have the most 
overhead. It may uh, uh, make your system go crazy sometimes, but there's some um, things we can do to uh, kind of make the most out of this next workflow, and that's called the multi-normal layer. So uh, just make sure to start this out. Make sure you're kind of in here selecting some of your uh, – just select, I guess, the top layer where you want this to be placed above. And uh, just go into here, and instead of hit the Sculpt button or add a new Sculpt layer, let's add a new multi-normal. So what this does is it creates – let's look into our layers down here. Here's our new normal group. What it does is it creates this hierarchy of effects until we get to the very bottom normal layer that's parented under the very last layer here or under the very last effects layer. And basically, any shape that you have placed under all of these different effects layers gets converted into a normal map. So technically, um, you could just start drawing out your shapes, do a fill. And there you go. Draw this out. Do a black. Maybe maybe it'll push it in with black. Nope. It's still going to uh, draw whatever. So what we can do, and this is kind of a case where it, it pays to know how all these layers work together. See this normal group that we just made? Just a bunch of different uh, hierarchies. Just a bunch of different children. All parented. Collapsible. So if we take this normal, though, and just click and drag it kind of above everything, we can see the actual shape that we drew. All right. And we can even go in and, uh, you know, let me grab like a uh, feathered brush. And then I'm going to make it look like this is kind of more of a more organic shift. So I'm going to come down here. and So you can kind of see now I have a gradient going up into the shape so you can kind of see the shapes without it being normals first and then guess what make sure your whole normal group let's zoom back down in here let's take that normal layer and kind of zoom down here and then we want to parent it under the very last effect layer remember we're looking in our new normal group that we made when we clicked on the multi-normal button we can just parent it under there and look we get the detail right here. It just converts whatever shape automatically to whatever settings are on the multi-normal. And if you want to go in and tweak the settings for this uh, normal layer, after you place all your shapes, just collapse it and select the root uh, group name. And then you'll notice all your sliders are there, except we're missing the bevel button. But remember, we can achieve some of the same um, effects just by affecting the curve to get like that groove pattern and whatever. The only thing is, whenever you uh, add one of these, you have to refresh uh, 3D. I think uh, the multi-normal needs a 3D refresh. And there you can see, you know, we have like a, a smooth gradient. So it looks like the metal is just kind of slowly rising up over uh, out of the uh, panel rather than it just being like a hard bevel. So we can get pretty creative when we do this stuff. So multi-normals are really nice in that they kind of just make your shapes and then place them under the very last uh, filter uh, layer or, you know, the effects layer, whatever. So you saw how I did it. And it gives you the most flexibility, allows you to go in and edit shapes without having to go into a sculpt. You know, if I wanted to... Uh, go in and just select my my normal layer where I had those shapes right there. In fact, you might even want to name these different shapes because you can stack different layers. So shape one, and then I can just create a new layer and let's call this shape two, just to be as generic as possible. And then I can go in and just start converting new shapes. And you'll notice, uh, I can hide them, and um, they're going to share the exact. The only, the only limitation is uh, if they're grouped under the same normal group like this that we just made, they're going to all share the same settings up here in our uh, menu. So 
You'll notice I change the size up. They both change. I can change the size down. And they both get sized down. Okay. So um, depending on what kind of effects you want, uh, you'll need to make different normal groups. And uh, I'll just call this multi-normal. And again, when you get done with a multi-normal, zip it up. And it'll uh, decrease the amount of uh, overhead for it, apparently. All right, cool. So uh, that's kind of how we can do some basic uh, shape creation. Again, I like the multi-normals methods. Because if you know how to navigate this whole hierarchy going on here, you can just kind of ploop, 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 ploop ploop down some shapes and all these different kinds of layers, have more control, easier to edit outside of uh, the sculpt tool. And uh, it's just my one of my favorite ways to do it. Uh, let's look at one more method uh, that we use where we can just convert a photo to a normal map. So this is going to be useful for uh, if you ever have to like uh, put some damage or a rocky texture or convert a grass texture and get a normal map out of it. Uh, we can use that method. So uh, why don't we just go and look for a tileable grass texture on the internet. Uh, grass tileable. All right, so we just get a random picture of grass, maybe something a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm going to save this to my desktop for right now. Grass. And then we're going to open it up inside of Photoshop. All right, so you'll notice now whenever I go to uh, my contact sensitive, it has this convert button right here, but I don't really want to use that. I want to go into my drop down menu right here. Let me zoom in again. So we have this drop down menu, and I'm going to go to uh, photo normal presets. It brings up something like this, and you can kind of pick what kind of setting. So you can see we have like fine grass. So we're going to select fine grass and go to active document. No need to create a new project or anything. I'm just kind of showing us how we can just convert a photograph to a normal map. And uh, with this new scene, we get a new cube inside of uh, Didu that kind of shows us uh, what's going on here with our normal map. So we might need to go in and tweak some of these settings. And it just gives us different options to go in and create some uh, quick normals based on a photograph. Uh, you know, really helpful if you're trying to make like a brush for terrain tools in Unity. Or if you just want to add like a quick little uh, damage detail, you can just find uh, a picture of some junk or something and convert it to a normal. And then plop it onto your normal map. And now you have a damage layer. All right, so those are the main workflows that we use. Uh, so I'm in this project now. So let's refresh uh, D2 or 3D, and it brings back my ship here. You can see some of the detail I've made on the wing. All right, so that kind of goes over the basic ways we can create normals just using some shapes. Uh, it's not too bad of a workflow. Um, just the biggest thing about D2 is just knowing how these layers work inside of, uh, you know, Photoshop and how they work in conjunction with the Indu. And the worst thing you can do is just go too fast or accidentally delete something out of here and it will screw up your normal map pretty bad. So just go slow, know how these layers kind of work. By this point, you should get a good idea and you'll be making normals in no time.